Well, good evening. Um, this is a great treat. Um, and I'm really impressed that you have been a supporter of FFI for over half its 110 years. Mm. That's a good record. We protect all species. But if you say, well, the reason that we protect species is because they're value to us, uh, I can see that's a very good practical reason for actually preserving the rainforest because there's lots of plants there that may have uh, alkaloids or whatever in their, in their genome which would be useful for medical. But I question that. Uh, I mean, that, I'm, I'm not against it as a reason, but it shouldn't be the fundamental reason, in my view. The fundamental reason is not because it should be affecting us, but because we have the stewardship of the world. What good is the mountain gorilla for? Well, actually, of course, it is good to the people of Rwanda because it, because it brings in a lot of money. But that's not the fundamental reason why FFI decided that it should actually be preserved and protected. It is because we are, have the stewardship of the world in our power as a species, and we ought to protect that world. We don't have the right to exterminate nature and manipulate it to that degree. At least, that is the moral proposition which I'm putting forward, and there will be plenty of people who argue with it, sure. But that's my position anyway. There is a, a, sort of a, little, a little cliche, which is that we have a finite environment, the planet. And anyone who thinks that you will have infinite growth in a finite environment is either a madman or an economist. <laughs> Well, some, some say, I think somebody was accusing you the other day of being um, a bit too pessimistic about population growth because actually as living standards rise in large parts of the, of the world, people do have smaller families. There's no longer this sense that you better have eight children because some of them will die. Wherever women are in charge of their own bodies, wherever they have the appropriate medical facilities, wherever they are literate, wherever they have political power, and wherever they have the medical uh, things available, birth rate falls. Um, and that, therefore, means that those of us in the, who are more developed countries who have all those things should make sure that those who haven't get in. And that is the one way in which I can see that, that in fact, population growth will really slow down in a serious way. People who live close to the natural world um, they don't have, it's true they don't have uh, romantic ideas about it, but they know about its welfare and they care for its welfare. And if they're given the chance, they will certainly look after it. I mean, why are the people in Africa and Asia, all over the place, who really, local people, who give their lives for these things? I mean, the people looking after, uh, the, looking after guarding elephants and rhino in East Africa now, local African people, are giving their lives. I mean, it's not a, it's not a facile um, figure of speech. They it can actually be very are there dangerous. because they believe they should be protected. FFI, uh, of course, started with, with the, the Arabian Oryx. That's its emblem, and that's, you can wear its lapel, and I should have been wearing mine tonight. Um, and that's been very useful. And not only has it been useful, but it's been an example of what you can do if you really put your mind to it. The Arabian Oryx is safe now, and it wouldn't be if it was not for conservation movements such as FFI espouses. It, the conservation movement itself has a responsibility to educate those people, to show those people how, in fact, keynote species or um, charismatic species like this are only that. Mm. Actually, you see, it, it, supposing it was the case that, that um, the Javan rhinoceros was so, so reduced in numbers that it would only live in zoos. Now, a Javan rhinoceros in a concrete-lined pit is not any more a Javan rhinoceros. It's a prisoner for a start. It's not behaving properly. It, it's, it, it's a travesty of what a real rhinoceros is. The only way the Javan rhinoceros will survive is if the forests survive. And so the Javan rhinoceros movement to help that means you've got to protect the forest. And the Javan forest, rainforest, very much reduced, appallingly reduced. But nonetheless, that is very precious, and it's the insects, and it's the plants, and it's the birds, as well as the rhinoceros, which the whole, constitutes the whole ecosystem. That's what you have to be saving. Sir David Attenborough, thank you very much.